Great to be with you, Peter Barvis here, cardiologist. Now, we recently had a video on the use of a score to determine what your risk of developing a clot is if you have atrial fibrillation. Well, if it's deemed necessary that you do start medication to help reduce the stickiness of your blood, well then, we're going to talk a little bit about what the options may be. Traditionally, warfarin has been one of the more commonly used medications that has been used for many, many decades. And warfarin is not without its drawbacks. Warfarin relies on you having to have some regular blood tests to keep an eye on the stickiness of your blood, a test called an INR. Warfarin can also have interactions with other medication that you might be on. So we've got to be very careful if we're starting, for example, new medication or things like antibiotics because of the way that the metabolism occurs and warfarin has an impact on vitamin K in our body. Well, any other medication that has similar effects can actually have a reaction with warfarin. And also when you are on warfarin, you would be told to be cautious with the amount of greens and vegetables that you're consuming because they all have a higher level of vitamin K and therefore they might interact or have an impact on how effective the warfarin is. So there are alternatives that have become available now that we are using more and more for patients who need to be on these blood thinning medications. And the most commonly required reasons that you might be on these medicines for are you know, atrial fibrillation, clots in the legs, the DVT, clots in the lung, or PE or pulmonary embolism. Uh, and if you have any of these conditions, then you might have been told a bit about these newer medications. And there are several of these available around the world. And these medicines are known as NOACs or novel oral anticoagulants. And there are a few different types around the world. Rivaroxaban, Dupigatran, Apixaban, and various trade names that you might see, Aliquis, Sorelto, Pradaxa. But these medications act via a different mechanism to reduce the stickiness of our blood and therefore reduce the risk of clot. And there are several advantages in using these medications that have for many years now been studied quite aggressively against Warfarin. So there have been many studies that have undertaken to look at these newer agents versus being on warfarin. And essentially they have very similar efficacy, if not sometimes a little better, than warfarin at reducing the risks of clot. What the other advantage is, however, is that in many of these studies, there was a lower likelihood of developing major bleeding complications when we manage patients with these NOAC medicines versus using warfarin. The other advantage is that you don't need to be having regular blood tests like you do with warfarin to monitor the INR. And the advantage here is that we know that a certain dose of this NOAC gives us a consistent thinning action of the blood. Whereas with warfarin, it can vary. And if your level of warfarin in the blood drops below, for example, two or an INR less than two, then it becomes far less effective at what it's meant to be doing. And therefore, there might be still a slightly higher risk of developing a clot. And I've had several patients in the past who have been managed with warfarin for many years, but have unfortunately developed complications like a stroke. And when we've done the level of warfarin at the time they've presented to hospital, the INR is pretty dramatically low. So it does fluctuate. These NOACs offer the advantage that there is a consistent dosing, there is no need for dietary restrictions, and that's the other advantage. You don't need to be watching, reducing greens and, and vegetables and so forth, and you don't need to be having the regular blood tests with a, a lower incidence of developing bleeding complications than with warfarin. One of the more common questions that I get is, well, with warfarin, if you do have a bleed, there is an antidote, and we can treat you with vitamin K, and that offers a very, very quick onset of action to reduce the thinness of your blood if you were to be having a major bleeding complication. With these NOACs or newer medication, there hasn't been this readily available reversing agent. However, that has changed more recently. There are now particular drugs that can be given very quickly to reduce the thinness of your blood in an emergency. 
So I am transitioning many of my patients from warfarin to these newer agents because they offer the advantage of being far simpler to take, more reliable, with less bleeding complications. Of course, when you are on these medicines, we do need to keep an eye on a few things, and one in particular is kidney function, making sure that that is adequate and satisfactory, because if your kidney function is somewhat impaired, well, then we do sometimes need to use a lower dose of these medications. But there are many advantages, as we've highlighted. Now, one thing to add is that if you have a metallic valve or a mechanical valve, as we say, and they're often made of stainless steel, but if you've had an operation to replace a valve and you are on a blood thinner, you would be on warfarin. So that's where the data is, that warfarin at the moment is the recommended strategy for patients who have valves that are mechanical and you will not usually be on a NOAC agent. So always check with your own doctor as to which medication might be more appropriate for you. Hopefully you found that useful. Until the next video, bye for now.